House of the Dragon makes Alicent Hightower, the daughter of Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, close personal friend since childhood with Rhaenyra Targaryen, the daughter of Viserys Targaryen, and, as of episode one, the new heir to the throne. Only the most hardcore of book purists would complain about this change. In the books, there is no real connection between Alicent and Rhaenyra. They're not even close together in age. And this lines up with a lot of the problems people could cite about how hard it is to adapt Fire and Blood, which is written in the style of a history book, into a vibrant, dramatic show. There is a lot of politicking and conniving and alliances in Fire and Blood. There's a lot of talk of ideology and policy and how to respond to different social and economic circumstances. But what there isn't is enough of what makes all that stuff interesting on a personal, humanistic level. All the passions and desires, all the tender moments, the quiet longing, or moments of just peace and happiness and stability in the midst of all the chaos. There are not a lot of moments like that in Fire and Blood. There are some wild, licentious anecdotes, but that's not really the same thing. Having the relationship between Rhaenyra and Alicent be a major emotional core of the show is a smart and thoughtful strategy. These are two people who have grown up together, who have come to see each other almost as sisters, who enjoy the company and comfort and laughter that being in each other's presence brings. Their lives are consumed by the dour, somber machinations of medieval politicking, but they have the opportunity to spend moments together apart from that apparatus to just laugh and tell stories and enjoy some magical moments together. The first episode provides insight into what the relationship is like as they have a little quiet, playful moment together under the shadow of a weirwood tree. They're talking about their lessons and Alicent is teaching Rhaenyra and trying to get her to remember what she was taught. And Rhaenyra plays like she doesn't understand, but she actually does. And she gets up and recounts everything that she was supposed to know, and in fact far more than Alicent knows. And during the scene she goes off on wild fantasies about traveling around the world and eating delicious cake. <laughs> and indulging in all these wild, pleasant reveries. This scene very astutely illustrates the difference in personality between these two. Rhaenyra is bold, she's daring, she's a little flippant and not particularly respectful of all the traditions and customs of the lands. She's not entirely uncompromising, but she is passionate. She follows her ambitions and her ideals. Contrasting against a world of careful, cautious strategizing, Rhaenyra's a little brash. She's imaginative and creative. She has a vital, fiery spirit. There's an electricity about her. She's very much someone who does not see herself as being confined to a specific societal role. She's true to her own feelings and desires and whimsies. Wherever she has in her heart to go, that's where she'll try to go. She understands to a certain extent that these political realities do present obstacles to what she wants, but that's nothing but a little fun challenge for her. She is trying to go and fulfill all her dreams. Not 
in a sense that will alienate her father, whom she deeply cares about, but in a sense that is more true to what she wants for herself than what a non-partial observer might say is the best for the realm as a whole. Alicent is completely different. She's a little shy and a little more timid, and Rhaenyra teases her for this. Alicent admires Rhaenyra's boldness, her playful imagination, but Alicent is also much more aware of how difficult it is to escape societal expectations, in part because it is more difficult for her. Rhaenyra is the only child of Viserys, now that her baby brother died in childbirth. She is the heir to the entire realm, as opposed to Alicent, who is far less free to just do whatever she wants because her position is more tenuous. She is the daughter to the second son of an important family. That, of course, differentiates her from being merely a commoner, but it is a vast gap that exists between her and Rhaenyra in terms of power and prestige and the freedom afforded by that power and prestige. This leads her to accept the immoral obligations that others place on her, such as in the first episode when we see Otto pressure her to seduce the king in one of the most uncomfortable and icky scenes in Game of Thrones in quite a long time. Rhaenyra would not tolerate that kind of order from anyone, not even her father. She's an unbowed, brave, passionate spirit who is always true to herself. She's volcanic. Alicent is just a normal person, relatively speaking, trying to engage with the political circumstances in which she finds herself. Now, both of these perspectives, being overly pliant and a bit submissive and being overly bold, aggressive, and a little entitled, can have their drawbacks. And as the show progresses, it will reveal those drawbacks. Now, I am going to talk about what will happen in the future of the show, assuming that it goes according to the books. This is all season one stuff, more than likely, and it will be revealed in the coming weeks, but if you don't want to know what happens going forward, I suggest you stop watching now. But... The relationship between Rhaenyra and Alicent is not going to last. All their moments of joy and escape and wonder are going to be replaced by trying to kill each other for profit, influence, and power. They will start to hate each other, and the result will be the ruin of the realm. Alicent's attempts to seduce the king will succeed, sadly and he will marry her, but he will also try to keep Rhaenyra as the heir to the throne, even after he has kids with Alicent. This causes a major fissure between Rhaenyra and her new stepmother, leading to the formation of these two different factions undermining the unity and harmony of the realm. These factions are, for the record, called the Blacks for Rhaenyra and the Greens for Alicent. In the books, the uh, enmity is mostly between Rhaenyra and Aegon II, Alicent's son and the proclaimed heir to the throne. This kind of enmity makes sense in the books, considering those books don't have the personal connection between Rhaenyra and Alicent. So Aegon and Rhaenyra, being the two different claimants to the throne, have an obvious point of conflict. But I believe the show will likely focus far more on 
the relationship between Rhaenyra and Alicent as it is more dramatically interesting. Aegon is going to be an important character as the person that Alicent is trying to get on the throne. He is going to have his own personality. I don't think he'll be another Tom and Baratheon. But the conflict between these two former friends who would once give anything to each other and who deeply treasured the time they spent together and now want to destroy each other at all costs, that is far more compelling. It's a tale of loss and degradation. It's a tale of two people who deeply care about each other being turned against each other for reasons not entirely within their control and leading to them slowly and gradually developing a level of bitterness and hate toward each other that explodes into the war that destroys the foundation of the Targaryen dynasty, which will never be as strong as it is before the Civil War. I'm sure the Episode 1 versions of these characters would greatly prefer ruling together and always being at each other's side instead of trying to murder each other. But the tides of history, as unpredictable as ever, have other plans. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The House of the Dragon. What do you think about Rhaenyra and Alicent's relationship? How do you think the show is going to deal with the breaking apart of their bonds going forward. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming very uh, quickly, I promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.